right, here we go. Episode 7 of our Frozen Horror series. We are almost done. There will be a total of 10 episodes. As always, I want to thank my YouTube members first for all your awesome contributions and your support. I can't thank you guys enough. You guys are absolutely amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This is your first time at the channel, or if you're a returning person watching the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Let's do it. Let's do this together. Because we're not quitting. We got Osworn coming up. We got some Warhammer. We got some other older games that I need to finish. Without further ado, let's go. All right, here we go. After scraping off all those nasty mold lines on your miniature, you're gonna take some black primer or spray paint and you're going to spray that thing from above, covering it completely in black. Once you're satisfied with your layer of blackness, use some white primer or spray paint and spray it from above, giving yourself that nice zenithal highlighting, greeting those shadows. The first color we're going to use is our flesh tone, which is Cadian flesh tone on the face. Get that everywhere. Next, we're going to use some Bad Moon Yellow, which is a contrast paint from Citadel on the hair. Now, I kind of like this as a yellow because yellow is a hard color to paint. Next, we're going to pre-paint some of those eyes in with that white. For our shoulder pads, we're looking for some Warp Lock Bronze. And we're going to create our chest plate armor which is going to be a two to one ratio, two parts contrast medium to one part black Templar contrast paint. And we're gonna paint that on the front of our miniature. The armor on the chest area. Now this is gonna be kind of thin, so you're gonna to wanna to do a couple layers. You can make it a little bit thicker and add a little bit more black Templar in there. I just don't wanna make it too dark because it is very dark when it's pure. Next, we're gonna use some snake bite leather on our lower region areas. We're going to also use this on the gauntlets as well. Then we're going to use some Basilicanum Gray, some pure Basilicanum Gray, and paint our underskirt, I guess you could say, on Prince Charming here. For our knee pads and our arrow head, we're going to use some lead belcher. For our boots, we're going to use some of that dryad bark, and we're also going to use this on the arrow shaft itself on the crossbow. But we're going to do that here in a second, but you can knock it out right now if you would like. For the sash areas, we're going to use some XV88. For 
For the crossbow itself, we're going to use some Steel Legion Drab. For the bowstring, we're going to knock that out with a little bit of Rakarth Flesh, or whatever you have that's similar to that. And our dry bark I was talking about on the arrow shaft. For our quiver of arrows, we're going to use some of that Morn Fang Brown, followed by some straight Mephiston Red on the arrow fletchlings that you'll see here in a second. For our hand gloves, we're going to use some Gorthor Brown, and then coming down to the final color, we're going to use some Dawnstone on our undershirt, which is located underneath the hairline, above the armor, and on the front side, and below the armor on the front and back side where the belly is exposed. We're going to be using three washes on this miniature, and the first one we're going to use is, of course, Reichland Flesh Shade on the skin. Next, we're going to use some Agrax Earth Shade, and we're going to use this on the hair and all of our brown areas. Now, this is really a speed paint. We're trying to get through this as quickly as possible because it's basically the same almost miniatures for the entire set except for the monsters. And finally on the washes, we're gonna use some Nolan Oil on the knee pads and the arrow head on our miniature. Right, we're going to use minimal highlights in the first one. We're going to use a Sigmarite for a dry brush on our Warplock bronze areas just to brighten it up a little bit with that gold bronzy looking color. Next, we're going to use some Necron compound on our silver areas, so the knee pads and the arrowhead as well. To brighten up our leather areas on our skirt, we're going to use some Golfane Brown as a dry brush. And again, we're just speeding through this. This miniature does not deserve that much time, in my opinion. Next, we're going to brighten up some of those gray areas to include the underskirt, the undershirt as well and a little bit on the pants as well with some Dawnstone. Now you can take it a step further and use Gray Sear or, or Thurum Gray or Administratum Gray if you would like but again I don't think this miniature warrants that amount of time. Coming down to the wire we're going to use some Cadian Flesh Tone to start highlighting up our skin areas. This is going to be on the forehead, nose, cheekbones, above the lips, and on the chin as well. Next we're going to use a 50-50 mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh just to brighten it up a little bit.
And we're going to use some pure Kislev flesh from the same areas we were just doing, specifically more on the cheekbones, the nose, and the forehead, and the chin as well. We're then going to re-brighten up our white eyes and then use some black on them just to give it that nice pupil look. Next, we're going to be finishing up here almost with the hair. And the first color we're going to be using is the Averland Sunset. Now, we're just using it on the streaks. We don't want to get this in the recesses. We want to keep that dirty blonde Prince Charming from Shrek look going. And that's exactly what I was going for. And someone did leave a comment when I posted the picture and he was spot on because that's what I was going for. Having a little fun with this miniature. Once you're done with that Everland Sunset, move over to that Flash Gets Yellow and do not use it all over the place. Just use it sparingly on the front. I really want it on the front portion of the bangs just to give it that real Prince Charming look. To brighten up those arrow fletchlings, this is really a really optional step if you want to go a little bit further. Some wild water red and just using it on the raised areas. And I'd had about enough of this miniature because again, it does not warrant that much time. I'm just painting the base. It's your favorite part because it means we're done. And Abaddon Black, we are done done. And that is it. Now we didn't, it took a little bit more time than I wanted to. I really want to speed paint this through. I should have used all contrast paints, but I didn't. And this is how it turned out. It turned out fine. But again, we don't want to waste so much time on a crossbowman that, you know, we just don't have time for that. So thank you for watching. YouTube members, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for everything you do. I can't thank you enough. And we're going to be finishing this up. I'm promising to get it done by the end of September and we are on track. So until next time, Paint on.